So here's the polynomial that we found as a real value function in this case. And if we wanted to define Q of any matrix, I'm just going to write A, but it's for any matrix A, we would, the associated polynomial on matrices would be 4 thirds times the identity matrix, which in this case is an n by n matrix. Well, in this case, it's 2 by 2 matrix, um, plus 1 sixth A. So let's see what happens when we actually compute this. So we have 4 thirds of the identity, both along the diagonal, plus 1 sixth of our matrix A. So it's 10 over 6, which is 5 thirds. 1, 1, 5 thirds. And if we add these two matrices, what do we get? 9 thirds, which is 3, 1, 1, 3, which is exactly what we found for f of a before. So we already know that when we square this matrix, we get exactly our matrix A back. Now let's look at the more general situation. So we're going to go back to our setup where we have an n by n matrix A, a function f on the set of eigenvalues. So we write if A is n by n, and lambda 1 through lambda n are the eigenvalues. And f is a function on the set of eigenvalues to, let's say, the complex numbers. We're going to find a polynomial q that first satisfies the initial equation we wrote down for the associated eigenvalues. So our goal is to find a polynomial q such that q of, when we plug in our corresponding eigenvalues, we get f applied to those corresponding eigenvalues. And we already know that that problem will help us solve this one by a similar analysis. That's why we're reducing our problem to finding a polynomial on just a finite set of numbers rather than trying to find the answer to our matrix problem. And in fact, when we look at the degree of this polynomial, we notice that it was also matching the degree of the size of our matrix. And that's going to be true in general. We'll be able to find a polynomial whose degree is at most the size of the matrix that will solve that problem, namely q of a equals f of a. And why that happens is precisely because of this equation because there are going to be, at most, n distinct eigenvalues. And so we only need to find a polynomial. So let me draw this as, a, as visually. Let's uh, just assume everything is real, so it's simple to draw this. So if we have lambda 1 here, lambda 3 here, lambda 2, maybe another lambda 4 somewhere out here. And let's say lambda 2 equals lambda 5, for instance. And if we apply f to these numbers, let's say they look something like this. What we're going to try to do is find the polynomial that fits through these, in this case, four points. And the reason it's four is because two of our eigenvalues um, repeated are, are repeated. And so we have to find the polynomial through these four points. So, and if we had n distinct eigenvalues, we would have n distinct points through which we would have to find a polynomial. Sorry, I misspoke. I think I said degree 2. I meant degree 1 because 1 is the highest power, but it starts from 0. So in this case, we would find a degree, in this case, we would find a degree 3 polynomial. And in general, it would be at most n minus 1 degree. So, and again, if we have multiplicity that's, non -z that's um, bigger than 1, then the problem is going to be a little bit easier to solve because we can find a polynomial of a lower degree. So let's just assume that all eigenvalues 
are distinct. Just, it's not, it's not actually making our problem easier, it's making it a little bit harder, because if some of them repeat, then the problem is reduced to a smaller and simpler matrix algebra problem. So if we assume all the eigenvalues are, dis are distinct, we're really doing the hardest case. Now, when such a thing happens, we can write our polynomial Q of x as a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared, all the way up to the highest degree, which, you know, just by looking at the pictures, we're assuming it's of the form a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1. And if we write down all of these different equations, we're going to get another linear system. And the unknowns of that linear system are these a's. And we know the values of x's. Those are our different eigenvalues. And we know what the q of those x's are. It's f applied to those values. So the associated linear system that we get looks like one ones along the vertical on the left side corresponding to the coefficient in front of a0. The coefficients in front of a1 are the different eigenvalues. The coefficients in front of a in front of x squared are the squares of our eigenvalues. And then the coefficients in front of our highest degree are our eigenvalues to the power of that highest degree. And the augmented side of our matrix is the value of those different eigenvalues. So our goal will be to try to solve this system. Well, actually, our goal is a little bit easier than that. The statement of the theorem says that there exists a polynomial Q that satisfies the equation Q of A equals F of A. And so all we really have to do is show that such a polynomial exists. So we don't have to solve this. Solving it is what is Q. So given a matrix A, what is what is Q, the, what is the polynomial Q? We're just trying to show that one exists. In other words, what we want to do is answer the question, does a solution to this system exist? And if we want to know a solution exists, if, well, if we can solve this system, right, and one criteria that allows us to solve this system is that if this matrix here, which is an n by an n minus, what is this? An n by n matrix. Right. It's an n by n matrix, and if this matrix is invertible. And when is a matrix invertible? If the determinant of this matrix is non-zero. So solution exists if the determinant of this matrix, which is called a Vandermond matrix. if this determinant is non-zero. So what we're going to do is, it's going to be a little bit of a brute force method, but we will find one way to compute the determinant of this matrix, and therefore show whether or not it's zero, and see if we can answer our problem.